What is going on guys and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be taking a look at the 2016 Cadillac CT6. This one behind me has the 3.6 liter V6 in it. It also has about 40,000 miles so we're going to go through some specs, some things I like about it, some things I might dislike about it. Then we'll fire it up and take it for a ride. So let's get through the intro and jump right into today's video. Alright guys, so now that we've gotten through the intro, let's go ahead and take a look at this thing and run through some of its specs. So like I had mentioned, this is a 2016 Cadillac CT6. This is an all-wheel drive model with the 3.6 liter V6 direct injected. It is mated to an 8-speed automatic transmission, which allows this thing to run a 0-60 to 60 time of 5.9 seconds and quarter mile of 14.3 seconds. It has the factory 20-inch wheels and the factory Brembos, so that allows this car to get up and go, handle, and stop very well for a car of its size so let's go ahead take a look around open it up and I will show you guys some of its features all right so now that we've gone over a few things about the car let's go ahead and start off our tour right in the back here we're gonna start off at the trunk so to open this thing up you've got a little button up underneath here you just hit that the trunk will come up all on its own then you've got plenty of space back here for luggage or whatever else you might need to cart around groceries or anything like that it's a good size trunk for a good size car now you've got the button up here to go ahead and close this guy and it'll come down and latch all on its own sounds like a silly feature but it's actually really nice to have so now let's work our way around to the back seats you can go ahead and open this up and as you can see it's a pretty nice interior you've got plenty of room back here this is one of the bigger cars if not the biggest car that Cadillac made of this year uh, it's a rather large car which allows us to have plenty of space for passengers now starting off here you've got some nice little privacy screens all the way around you've got them on both sides and there's one that comes up in the back that is power which i will show you guys and then you've got all of your seat control buttons right here and then some other cool little features so let's go ahead hop in this thing and i'll show you guys around so now that we're in the back seat, let's go ahead and take a look around. So over here on the door, we've got a few different buttons. You've got your cooled seats, your heated seats, and then the eject button, which will move the seat into a comfortable position to get out. Then over here, you've got two more buttons. One is gonna be for this sunroof so that we can control our own rear sunroof here. And then the other button that's over there is for a privacy screen in the back. It goes nicely with the two side ones that are on each door. We do plan on tinting this thing, but for now, these are a nice feature to have. So then if we flip around here and look down here, you've got all of your heat controls. You can do your own temperature and where the air is actually coming out, as well as a couple vents and a speaker. You've also got a DVD slot back here. So if you wanna watch an old school DVD movie. So now if we come up here to the back of the seat, we also have a nice little feature there as well. And it will resume wherever you left off. So we've gone, so we went ahead and popped our TV out and it's a nice little feature to have it's obviously got one on both sides and then it will also mirror to the one up front if you're parked so that is a nice feature to have especially if you're on a long trip with children or anything like that even myself i like to play with it a little bit and that is all controlled from right in here so we've got an hdmi port two usb ports and an audio out jack and it also came with these classy cadillac headphones i've never used them but i'm sure they work perfectly fine then you've also got some trunk access back here. It's a little uh, access panel that folds down so that you can reach whatever you might need to in the back as well, a cooler, a shirt, whatever you might need. And then also on the armrest, we've got our seat controls. So this will allow you to tilt back, recline, whatever you wanna do. It goes a bunch of different directions. And then this one right here will actually control your massager. Yes, this thing has a seat massager. When you hit that button, these controls will come up and it will allow you to set your massage to whatever you want. I don't really use it that much, but it does actually work pretty well. 
So now that we've explored the back seat, let's go ahead and move up front and see what the driver gets for features. All right, so I climbed my way up to the front here. Let's take a look around at some of the features that the driver gets. So over here on the door, you've got your seat controls, just like in the back. Uh, it goes a bunch of different directions. You've got your massager there as well. And then just your basic controls down here. And then as we work our way over to the steering wheel, you've got a ton of buttons on here to use. So all of your cruise control stuff, your phone stuff, and then you can cycle through all the menus and volume, skip the station on the radio, and then you've also got your adaptive cruise settings down here, how close you want to get, and your lane keep assist on or off, as well as a heated steering wheel. Now, as we come up here to the display, you use the buttons on the steering wheel here and you can cycle through it. It's got a few different options for you as far as layouts. You can come over to the side here and cycle through a bunch of different things as well. Just your average like fuel economy stuff. And then this is also your driver assist page. So again, you can set how close or far you are for adaptive cruise. As we come over to the center here, you can cycle back through and go to your options and go to display layout. And it, this will completely change the layout of your display. I personally like using the balance one, which is this one right here. And you can pretty much do all the same things, cycle through and set whatever you would like, as well as in the center on both these displays, it gives you the option for night vision, which I'll show you guys a clip of me using the night vision right now. It's actually really cool. As you guys can see, it almost shows you like heat signatures, a uh, really nice feature to have, especially at night. And if you're in a wooded area with like animals or little kids or anything, this thing is definitely saved me before with a deer so now let's transition over to your main display here now as you can see it's got a bunch of different options up here you can go to your climate which you can also control down here so all of your buttons that are down here you can also control up here on the screen this car does have an ionizer filter which is just like a purification system so if we turn this off we can go back to our main screen and you can control the rear video. You can see what they're seeing. You've got Pandora and a couple other little options like the factory nav and settings and all that stuff. And then if you come into here, if you put an SD card in, you can actually use the cameras on the car as your dash camera. So that's a really nice feature to have as well. And then you've got this camera button, which will show you the cameras around the car. You've got your bird's eye view to the left over here and then your rear camera. I'm not sure how to pull up the front camera, but it does have one for when you're pulling into a space it'll tell you when you're getting close and pop up with the camera so those are really nice features to have as well and then we've obviously got apple carplay you can get into here and show your maps and all that stuff but it is a nice big screen i'm not sure the dimensions but if i can find it online i will show them to you guys right down here at the bottom of the screen but when you get into maps it's a nice big view you can see everything so i really like that and then down here you've got this pad and you can move it around and select whatever you need to control the main screen right from here which is a nice feature because your hand just happens to lay here so i really like having that your cup holders also are right here they're nice hidden and flip up to open up for you now some of the other things that i really like about this car are some of the details as you can see we've got a nice carbon fiber piece that trims this car out i'm not sure if it's an appearance package or part of some package and then if you pull the shifter all the way down to manual mode it will let us use the paddle shifters up here on the steering wheel they have a really nice positive feel to them they click nice and firm so you know that your input was taken but i really like having the paddle shifters it makes the car feel a lot more sporty and fun to drive now some of the things that i don't like about the inside of this car is one of them is this glove box if you hit the button there the glove box comes flying down at you but for the size of car you'd think it'd have a nice big glove box it's really not that big you can just fit your insurance and all that type of paperwork in there but other than that not a whole lot of storage room in the glove box and the same could be said for this little armrest here this flips up and allows you to plug in your phone for the carplay and uh, audio and all that type of stuff but again it's it's a very small cubby this does flip up this way and this way but like i said not a huge fan of it i just feel like it could be a little bit bigger it does have a nice little slot for you to put your phone in that holds it from sliding around or anything like that now as we work our way up here you've got your rear view mirror which actually turns into a camera 
I really like that. I always leave it in the camera setting. And then of course you've got all of your control buttons up here for your sunroof, garage door opener, lights, your emergency SOS OnStar stuff, as well as that rear visor that was up here. You can also lock the rear windows and turn all the lights on or off in the car, obviously. So now that we've gone through some of the features that you have up front, let's go ahead, let this thing warm up a little bit and take it for a ride. All right guys, so now that we've got this thing warmed up, there's a few things I wanna show you before we start driving. So first off, down here you've got three buttons. You've got auto hold, traction control, and mode. The first one is auto hold, and if you click that button, when you put your foot on the brake, if you're in drive, my foot's on the brake, I'm gonna let off the brake, and the car does not move. So it's gonna hold you at a stop sign or a light or whatever, if you bring it to a stop with your uh, foot brake, and you have auto hold on, it will hold the car in place until you give it gas and then it'll start to roll. If you hit the brake and hold it again till you're stopped, it'll hold you in place once again. I personally really like auto hold. It's great for drive throughs or uh, heavy traffic, anything like that. I think it's super handy. We're gonna go ahead and turn that off for now. Then this car is also equipped with auto start. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off. It's up here by our radio. So we've got that off. So then right below auto hold, you've got the trash control button. If you hit it once and then hit it again, it'll turn it off then back on. But if you hit the traction control button and hold it, it'll come up and say traction control off, keep holding it. And then you'll have a little icon on the side that will come up as well. And that's stability track. So now our traction control and stability track are off which will allow you to foot brake the car if you wanna launch it harder or anything like that. If you have traction control on and you try to launch the car using the foot brake and try to stall it up, it's gonna limit you. If we have everything turned off, we can foot brake the car and get it to come up pretty decently to the point where the only limit is how much the brakes will hold with this car being all wheel drive. So we're gonna leave that off. Now we have touring mode, snow mode, and sport mode on this mode button, which is right below the traction control button. So we're gonna put it in tour mode first. We'll drive it a little bit like that, and then we will go ahead and switch over to sport mode. So let's go ahead and take this thing out on the road. This car rides extremely well for what it is. Um, it's a very big car, and it kind of gives the feeling that it almost wants to be a sports car, but it's definitely aimed at luxury. It's got all the creature comforts and amenities, and it's super comfortable to drive. I mean, this thing is pretty much effortless to drive around. Right now, we're still in touring mode, just driving it around a little bit. It's super comfortable, it'll upshift to keep the car nice and quiet and get decent fuel mileage. But if we go ahead and click the mode button, we're gonna put it down into sport mode. And then we will drive it around a little bit more like that. Car handles really nice. You can throw it into a corner really good for how big of a car it is. Now, like I said before, this car is definitely main focus is on luxury and comfort, but you can definitely tell that they had some sport in mind when they were doing this car because it 100% handles like it wants to be a sports car. So let's go ahead and pull up here and just see if we can get this thing to take off a little bit for us. Stall it up on the foot brake a little bit. This thing gets up and goes. And it sounds really good on the shifts. Uh, you can hear it almost like pops a little bit on the shifts. And then it holds that gear because we're in sport mode. So for what this car is, like I said, this thing gets down really well. So if it was the 3.0 with the twin turbos, I bet you this thing would absolutely fly. Again, this is just the 3.6 liter naturally aspirated. With 335 horsepower and 284 foot-pounds of torque, this thing gets down exceptionally well for how big of a car it is. We are in sport mode. Let's go ahead and put it down in manual mode for a second. So now we're in manual mode. It is in eighth gear right now, so we're gonna step that down a little bit. Now, I think this car would actually sound really good if the exhaust was a little bit louder, but again, their main concern was a luxury car. So this thing's super quiet. As you guys notice, when we floor it, you can hear it, and you can hear it a little bit on the shifts. It actually sounds pretty good for a V6, in my opinion, but it's still very quiet. 
So now we're down in third. Do a little 40 roll from second here. And this thing handles phenomenal. Like I said, it really wants to be a sports car. It's a, a great balance of comfort, luxury, and sport. I think it would make a phenomenal daily driver for someone. When we first got this thing, I was extremely impressed with how well this thing handled. I mean, she's a big girl, but she handles her own fairly well for what it is and how big it is. I was just completely shocked. I thought it was kind of going to be like driving a boat around but it's really not. Thing drives great, handles really good, and my biggest thing about it is it's so comfortable to drive, especially if you start turning on all the options. This thing almost drives itself. I mean, it needs very little input. So while we're driving around stuck behind a little traffic here, I figured it would be a good time to go over a few issues that we have had with this car. Earlier, I mentioned that it was at 40,000 miles. It actually just rounded 50,000. So we've had this car for quite a while now, and there are a couple issues that we have had with it. I'm not sure how the lighting is right now. I'll go ahead and kick this on. Not sure if that makes it better or worse, but I'm gonna try it. So one of the biggest issues that we've had with this car was a little while after we got it, we put probably five, 6,000 miles on it, and the transmission started making a weird noise. It, it sounded like you were driving over rumble strips almost, like the rumble strips on the highway or in the center of a lane. It almost sounded like you were running over those anytime the car would shift into a higher gear and kind of like lug down. Um, it started very mild and then very quickly got worse. So of course we brought it to the dealer because this car is still under warranty. And when I brought it to the dealer, I found out that they knew that GM put the wrong fluid in the transmissions for these cars. It doesn't react well with the clutches or whatever inside this transmission, and it causes that and can cause a couple other symptoms. So that was kind of annoying. We thought it would be covered under warranty, but of course it's considered a fluid, so it wasn't... Yo, my brother loves you, dude. He watches you all the time, he said. Tell him I appreciate that. Do. Thanks, bro. Have a good one, man. That was cool. Just had a uh, fan come up to us. So what's up to him and what's up to his brother? I appreciate you guys for checking out the channel. But he did remind me I have my vanity plate on the back of this thing. I'm glad he pulled up because I'm going to pop it off real quick. All right, guys. So back to where we were. I had to pull over and pop that vanity plate off. I'm glad that he stopped and uh, said what's up because I completely forgot I had the plate on there and we don't have this car stickered up. So I was like, how did he know it was us? But I'm glad that he did. And that was super cool. If uh, you guys see me out and about, feel free to stop and say what's up. I always appreciate it. I love the support and uh, it helps push me to continue making these videos. So back to where we were though, um, like I said guys, this thing is phenomenal, but we have had a couple issues with it and that issue with the transmission was a huge blow because like I said, it was not covered under warranty because it was considered a fluid and a fluid flush and fill which got pretty expensive. I want to say it was like a thousand dollars or more because they have to flush the whole system through with the new fluid. I think they do it once or twice. So that was pretty expensive and kind of something that I felt should have been a recall, but you know how it is with these big companies. If not every single one of them had an issue or if they didn't make enough cars that had the issue, they're not gonna recall it. So that kind of was what it was and we just had to bite the bullet and pay it. And if anything further happens with the transmission, it will be covered if there was any damage caused by that fluid. So if you guys are gonna buy one of these things or are looking at buying one of these things, make sure you check and see if that fluid was changed out. It does need to be done at a dealer or a shop that is well equipped with a machine that is capable of flushing the entire system. But other than that transmission issue, the only other thing that we've had to deal with was the timing cover. It started leaking a little bit of oil, but while we had it in there for the transmission flush and fill, they were able to take care of that under warranty. So like I said, if you guys are looking to buy one of these things, just make sure that the transmission service was done and give it a good once over for any oil leaks and make sure that gets taken care of. But other than that, this thing is driven phenomenal and we really haven't had anything other than oil changes. 
but it does look like it's starting to get dark on us so let's go ahead and head back to the house all right guys so we've made it back to the house and as you can see this thing drives phenomenal it handles like a sports car when you want it to and inspires confidence but it is also a very nice smooth and comfortable luxury car the only thing i haven't been happy with is the transmission issue because gm put the fluid in it i feel like they should have had to fix it but hopefully everything's going to be good from here on out with it if not we do have the warranty which will cover any internal transmission issues just not the fluid so as always i appreciate you guys for checking out the channel don't forget to like comment subscribe and ring that bell and follow us on our other social media we have facebook tiktok and bought to build official on instagram and we will catch you on the next one